Hello again and thank you for joining me for another lesson. Today we're going to discuss another important subject and that is sleep. Sleep is a vital element of our daily routine and it takes up around one third of our life. Sleep quality and getting enough of it at the correct times it is just as important as food and water for survival. You can't create new memories, learn new things, concentrate properly or have good reflexes if you don't get enough sleep. From the brain to the heart and lungs to the metabolism to the immune system, mood and disease resistance, sleep has an impact on practically every tissue and system in the body. Chronic sleep deprivation or having poor quality sleep has been linked to an increase in high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, depression, and obesity. During sleep, we consolidate memories, we reset the immune system, we restore hormonal balance, and we clear metabolic waste and neurotoxins. Research shows that during sleep, the fluid present in the brain and spinal cord washes in and out like waves, helping the brain get rid of accumulated metabolic trash during the day. These findings have implications for neurodegenerative diseases, which are thought to be caused by a buildup of toxic proteins in the brain, such as amyloid beta in Alzheimer's disease. Research has shown that amyloid beta is cleared more efficiently during sleep, which is often disrupted in this group of patients. Sleep problems are also a feature of many psychiatric disorders from depression to schizophrenia. And now we will get a brief introduction into sleep. We have two internal biological processes that work together to regulate when we are awake and when we are asleep, the circadian rhythm and the sleep-wake homeostasis. The circadian rhythm controls a wide range of functions that include variations in alertness, body temperature, metabolism, and hormone secretion. Circadian rhythm regulates your sleep pattern, making you feel tired at night and allowing you to wake up without having necessarily an alarm in the morning. And it works based on our biological clock, which is a 24 hour a day clock. The pineal gland in the brain produces melatonin in response to darkness and it stops producing it in response to light. Melatonin helps in the regulation of our circadian rhythm and makes the transition to sleep easier while promoting consistent high quality sleep. Melatonin serves as a time cue for our biological clock. Basically melatonin, it is like a biological alarm that it tells your body, hey, it's nighttime, it's time to go to sleep. Sleep-wake homeostasis keeps an eye on your sleep requirement and regulates your sleep intensity. After a period of sleep deprivation, the need for sleep or the sleep drive becomes stronger and stronger with each hour you are awake. Now, many factors influence our need for sleep like medical problems, medications and stress, but probably the most important one is light exposure. Specialized cells in our eyes process light and inform the brain whether it is day or night, allowing us to shift our sleep-wake cycle forward or backward. You have probably noticed that it is difficult to fall asleep or return to sleep after being exposed to light. We also have a chemical called adenosine, which is believed to play an important role in our sleep-wake homeostasis. Adenosine is a chemical that is produced both during physical activity and mental activity. It is basically linked with our energy expenditure. Adenosine slowly builds up in the, in the body over the course of the day. 
as it starts to gradually attach to the adenosine receptors, it begins to promote muscle relaxation and tiredness, which is why you start to get tired later in the day. Now, an interesting fact, the caffeine attaches on the same receptors that the adenosine would normally attach. All the adenosine then starts to build up because the receptors are already occupied by the caffeine. Once the caffeine effects start to wean off, we get tired and sleepy all of a sudden, and then we reach for another coffee. That is why it is important not to drink coffee later in, in the day if you want to go to sleep at a normal hour. Now let's have a look at how sleep affects our weight. Sleep deprivation causes a hormonal imbalance in the body which encourages overeating and weight gain. Leptin and ghrelin are hormones that control your appetite and when you don't get enough sleep, the production of these hormones is disrupted. Ghrelin levels, they go up and the leptin levels go down and this will result in increased hunger, so you eat more. Sleep deprivation has also been linked with a deficit of growth hormone and high levels of cortisol both of which have been linked to obesity. Unfortunately, the consequences of sleep deprivation on weight are not restricted to hormonal changes. Sleep deprivation has been linked to a higher tendency to choose high calorie foods and late night calorie consumption, which raises the chance of weight gain. Have you noticed that when you stay up late at night, you get the munchies? even though you don't feel hungry. I know I am. Also, people who do not get enough sleep exercise less than those that they do sleep enough, probably because sleep deprivation causes daytime sleepiness and tiredness. Everybody experienced the fatigue, the short temper and the lack of focus that comes with the poor night sleep. And to finish on the same bad note, when you don't get enough sleep, you set your brain up to make bad decisions because you lack the mental clarity. So when it will come to choose between exercise or having a lazy day or between a piece of cake and an apple, I don't think it will be much competition there. Because sleep is so important for our health, how can we make sure that we get a good quality sleep during the night? Well, the first step to getting a good night's sleep is to go to sleep and wake up at the same time every day, even on the weekends. Stay away from the screens for at least two hours before bedtime because the, the screens, they emit blue light and as we saw earlier, it tricks your brain into thinking that it is still daytime and that is disrupting the melatonin production. Avoid stimulants like caffeine, energy drinks and chocolate for at least six hours before bedtime. Caffeine can actually last in your system for six to eight hours. Don't drink alcohol before bed. Alcohol can actually help you fall asleep because it has a sedative effect. But once the effect of alcohol wears off, it actually disrupts your sleep during the night, leaving you feeling tired the next day. This can create a vicious cycle of drinking alcohol in the evening to help you to go to sleep and drinking too much coffee during the day to help you stay awake. Avoid eating too close to bedtime. Digestion slows down during sleep and this can cause indigestion and heartburn. But don't go to sleep hungry either because this can disrupt your sleep. Aim to eat your last meal of the day two to three hours before going to bed. Don't bring your worries in the bedroom. Worry and fear will make it difficult for you to fall asleep and stay asleep because they activate the fight and flight response. Sleep deprivation can make the anxiety worse and this will result in a vicious cycle of insomnia and anxiety problems. So deal with your stress or worries before bedtime 
and you can see how you can do that in the stress chapter. Create a relaxing atmosphere, which includes keeping your bedroom dark, cool, and quiet. Stick to a consistent bedtime routine that incorporates calming activities like taking a bath, light reading, or meditation. Think of when you were a child. Your parents had some sort of ritual to put you to sleep. We are all creatures of habit, so creating healthy habits before bedtime it is very important. Don't lie in bed awake. If you can't go to sleep, do something else like reading or listening to music until you feel tired. Otherwise, your brain's default mode kicks in and your mind starts wandering off. And often that means dwelling on your day-to-day -day worries. There is also evidence that a good workout as little as 10 minutes of exercise done on a regular basis can dramatically improve the quality of your sleep. As a general rule, if you wake up tired and spend the day longing for a chance to have a nap, it's likely that you're not getting enough sleep. You see, when our lives get busy, the sleep is the first priority that goes out of the window. But if you need to choose between sleep, physical activity and food, choose sleep because it is way more important. And this concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for watching. Until next time.